OMG, like seriously? Hi, it's Fifi, and you are like totally tuning in to the Vintage View podcast. And now brace yourselves for the ultimate hosts of awesomeness, Scott and Sam. Like, take it away, guys. Me, yow. Hello once again, retro gaming fans, and welcome back to the Vintage View podcast. Hey, Scott, other than poor life skills, what did you collect as a kid? Bruises. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Bumps and bruises? <laughs> something like that. You know, kids in school bullying the nerd. But what are you going to do? No, um, seriously, though, um, I really didn't collect a lot of stuff. Um, like you, I was mostly broke my whole life. And once I got a job myself to be able to buy my own stuff, that's when I started collecting video games, but not really collecting more, just buying and trading and, you know, having a diminishing returns. But the one thing that I, I did actually collect at one point, it was something my grandmother used to buy for me all the time. And that were, uh, were <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, uh, Legos. So at one point I had a large, uh, garbage bag full of, of Lego. And then somewhere along the line, it kind of disappeared. But another thing that I did collect, which is pretty stupid, um, is every month I would get a new bus pass, you know, take the bus around town and I would save it because they had interesting designs on them. And at one point I had like five years worth of bus passes. So that was about 60 different bus passes. And then I realized, what am I doing? So I threw those all away. So that's really all I, I collected as a kid. And, you know, there's definitely things I wanted to collect, but we'll talk about those later. What about you? Oh, that is a long laundry list of crap, I must oh, say. Crap. We're um, be it wasn't here crap forever, when I was a we? kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing is, a lot of the stuff that I collect ends up on those stupid lists of, did you have this as a child? It's worth billions of dollars now. I had some of those. Um, you know, I started out, the first thing that I can remember is like we had um value city. so that's where all the poor people went to get the really cool stuff you and they had those ljn wwf wrestling figures no i i absolutely was and still am um but the wwf wrestling figures and i had so many of those and the the one thing was when i would sit there and play with them i would be like redoing the matches that I saw on, you know, the Sunday morning when they would show WWF where I live. <laughs> and, um, like you would take Hulk Hogan against Jake the snake and you would smash them together. And then like the color of Hulk Hogan's hair would rub off on Jake the snake. And I imagine it probably in real life would too, because I, I think he dies his hair. Well, now but, he's um, like a thousand years old. Yeah. Uh, so what's the left thing of is his though, hair, I should say. I honestly did not know LGN made toys. I thought it was basically just oh yeah, video games, which were bad, bad video games. Yeah, they. I think they were a toy company first. Well, I mean, that's probably a well known thing. See, knowing nothing but about they made a lot of different stuff. knowing nothing about about wrestling. I only recognize two characters, and that's Hulk Hogan and uh, Mister Slim Jim himself, Randy Savage. Oh, let's see here. I think you've got Andre the Giant on the left. Uh, you've got uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper far on the right. Uh, the gentleman front on the left, I'm not sure. I should probably remember him. Oh, it looks uh, like someone's got, wearing a Hot Topic uh, shirt. <laughs> where at? On the right. Oh, that, that's Roddy Piper, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. The, the, I want to call him Hillbilly Jim, but I'm not sure whether that's his actual name. The guy with the brown hat there kind of in the back. And then I believe that's Junkyard Dog. But yeah, I was really into WWF when, you know, I was young. And those were super easy to get a hold of because Value City made it extremely accessible for us. Uh oh. Then uh, let's I think you cut out, but I heard you say then. Okay. Did I cut out? Okay. Um, I apologize then, for like, the audio issues, people. 
Yeah, it happens, and we're just rolling with it, folks. We're not going to end. Um, I could, but no, I hey, don't have time for that. But we've got the Fisher Price Little People because I didn't personally collect these. I think I kind of inherited these. Oops. Um, oh, it was they? kind of a where are they? Here they are. <laughs> there, yeah. The um, the thing was. Uh, like, I guess either my sister had them before me or my brother had them before me, or I, I don't know where they came from, but I remember, you know, having like the dog, the people, we even had like a horse and Dude, we I had think the I had house. the dog, one of the two dogs. Yeah. I think everybody had just like, like Actually, they talk about the, like the Tetris cartridges for Game Boy, like how they just, if you put a Game Boy in a cupboard. For like three or four years, you come back, it it grows a Tetris cartridge. I think those just, <laughs> they just, just pop. But uh, yeah, we even had the house. And the cool thing about the house was it had a doorbell. So you push this little lever down by the door, and it sprung up into a, a real bell. And it went ding. And as a kid, that just blew my mind. I thought that was the coolest thing. But then... Fisher Price got into the husky figures. So this was a little bit more the young boy market and I was a little bit older. Honestly, I had like a we ton go with Tonka trucks. They do. But uh they had their own vehicles which were all plastic. So I'm assuming it's kind of in that era of kids are falling over on the Tonka trucks and cutting their heads open. So let's move <laughs> to plastic. But I remember one Christmas, and I wish I had the photo to insert. Um, I'm sitting in front of the Christmas tree, and I had a whole bunch of uh, the the vehicles for the Husky figures. I had, like, the police car, the police motorcycle, and as a kid, you know how kids are. They're not sure what they want to do for their career. I originally wanted to be a police officer, and then I uh, found <laughs> out my Uncle Ed was a firefighter. And I was like, "Ooh, I want to do that." I could so see. So I got either. really heavy at the fire. Really? No, I could see you being a gardener. Yeah. Somebody who mows lawns all day, like I used to do. I mean that—that's kind of why. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But I, I I had a collection of fire trucks too, but we're not. Gonna I like talk how that cop that. has like no neck. Yeah. <laughs> I guess for whatever reason, they just figured a, a tie will do. Um, and then kind of another inheritance was, you know, the Tonka vehicles, like you were saying. We had a couple of those. And, like, the front-end loader and the, um, I think we had a dump truck. And I think I may have picked one up from a flea market. So that was pretty cool. But then those Tonka vehicles led into collecting rocks. I know that sounds weird, but I was, you know, sitting there digging stuff up, and then I would be like, ooh, this is a cool rock. Every once in a while, I found an arrowhead, which was really cool. Which may or may or not have been made out of like wood. Myself. Or not wood. Uh, yeah. Rock. These probably weren't rock, the ones yeah. you had, but I figured these are metal Tonka trucks. No, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, that front-end loader looks almost... I identical because the cap had been ripped off. Um, oh, did it have I the same rust too? Of stupid, it probably. In a fit <laughs> of stupid childhood uh, anger, I took it and I threw it down and it crushed the little cab. So we took that off. But um, <laughs> I didn't have the... I think on the far right there is the um, the vehicle loader. It's like a vehicle oh, carrier. I could see that. And I didn't... Yeah, I didn't have one of those but I had the dump truck and I... I had the front end loader, and that was pretty cool. Now, I'm going to go and use this platform for a second to publicly apologize to my sister. And this will all make sense here in a second. She had a Barbie collection. And as a young, dumb, adolescent me... As you are. I had nothing else... Yes, as I am still. Um, I, I took great pleasure in taking her Barbies, bending the legs forward so that the knees were bent backwards, popping the heads off and throwing the heads into trees. 
that's what I did as a child. You're a horrible so person, man. I would like to apologize. I absolutely am, and I would not <laughs> hesitate to do that with another Barbie. Um, I I have to apologize to my sister, even though she'll probably never listen to this. But yeah, uh, that was her Send collection that I ruined because I was an idiot. And dick. I would rather her not listen. Yeah, I would rather her not listen to these podcasts. Um, <laughs> but other things like you know, a lot of people had Transformers and He Man and stuff like that, and I didn't get many of those, but I had a few of them. I had um, the uh, discount uh, Transformers. What were those called? Like uh, Go-bots. form cars, doors, or something? Oh, yeah. Which is funny because uh, eventually start. they were bought by Hasbro and then kind of rolled into the Transformers line. It was kind of weird. Yeah. I was going to say, let's start quoting Clerks too. Uh, what was the GoBots for the Kmart of <laughs> I mean, transforming yeah. vehicle robots? Yeah, but eventually um, they became the same line, which is kind of weird, but yeah. it is what it is. But, yeah. I had a few He-Man. Um, I specifically remember one. I thought it was just a, a pickup truck. And you would pull it back and let it go, and it would, you know, do the whole roll forward thing. And then I dropped it accidentally this time, I swear, and it popped open. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've broken my toy. And that's when I figured out it was a Transformer. Now, whether it was genuinely Transformer or GoBot. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about that. Yeah. I thought you were talking about He-Man. I was like just googling like He-Man truck and <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm yeah, seeing He-Man monster really truck and all that weird stuff. Yeah. No. Um <laughs> another thing that I had a large collection of, well, I wouldn't say it's large, but a collection of was the uh the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figures as I believe a lot of kids did in our generation. Um I had at was, least 5. I, yeah, I had all four turtles and Splinter. And Splinter, I traded a buttload of other other my toys to my friend for it, and he wouldn't he would not give up Rocksteady or Bebop, which sucked. And yeah, like I'm you, I don't sure, think I ever wanted uh, April. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had the four four turtles. Um, I I don't believe I ever ever had Splinter, but I I pretty sure I didn't have April. Being a young boy, I'm like, ooh, a girl. That's a girl's toy, a so doll. I didn't want April. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much is what my adolescent mind thought. Um, I just wanted but, the actual you know, hero I, characters. I, I didn't really care, you know, because she was always the damsel yeah. in distress. So I, I never wanted her. That's yeah. the reason why I didn't. But as an adult, I don't like, think dude, I ever, I'll take all of them. Yeah, I don't think I ever had Rocksteady or Bebop. Um but my problem was those little toy, not the toys, the weapons that they're holding were uh, made out of this really soft plastic. And for my young mind, whatever reason, I was like, I'm just going to stick that in my mouth and chew on it. And I had to throw away almost every accessory they came with because, yeah, I had a chewing habit. Another character that I did have from the uh, Ninja Turtle line was the uh, Yusagi Ujimbo, uh, or however it's pronounced, I have no clue, uh, action figure. And I think I did also have Shredder. Um, I do remember there was a Shredder, but I, I don't believe I ever had. Well, my Shredder was incomplete. I had like, it was like missing an arm or something, but um, oh. this is Yusagi Ujimbo or something right here. This... Oh, yeah, yeah, the rabbit. The samurai rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. One thing literally just hit me was I used to have a Teddy Ruck and I had a lot of Teddy the Ruxpin. um <laughs> I had Teddy Ruxpin and then I had the uh his friends that like uh I think you could connect them together with a little cord, not sure. But when the cartoon came out, they had the little figures and whatnot. I had almost all the figures and then I had the uh, the blimp or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. I specifically remember having that. Uh, but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action figures actually became a collection because I was such a good boy at the doctor's office. Oh, you're such a good boy. 
Yeah, I hate going to the doctor. <laughs> Absolutely hate going to the doctor. What so I thought was funny, to though. con me into going, my mom would be like, after we go to the doctor, we'll go to Toys R Us and you could pick out one action figure. I'm like, okay, cool. It's got to be another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Hey, you know what? There's actually three three more characters that I did have as a kid. I had Baxter, um, uh, Metalhead right there, and then uh, Rat King in the bottom right. But then you got General I'm... Trag, uh, Genghis Frog, Leatherhead, Krang, uh, Howard the Duck ripoff. I don't remember what his name was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's all the way over I... the side. That's weird. I think I had Krang. I can't guarantee, but I think I had Krang. The, the, I mean, this Krang would be a little more usable, but the one that I would have loved to have had yeah. would be the one in the actual, like, the best way to put it is, like, the mech suit. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. What else? So what I guess else? I did have more uh, turtles than I thought, but I'll tell you, though, the, the Playmates line was crazy. Mm-hmm. Because they had... Uh, I think... Probably hundreds of figures because you had like um, Star uh, yeah. Trek Ninja Turtles. You had uh, <laughs> you had some of the weird ones like uh, um, some of the characters that were never in the cartoon or the comic book, but then eventually became part of the comic book and all that weird well, stuff. That's, that's what I was about ready to say was the fact that weren't the two um, the two monsters from like the second movie were created just to sell toys. Toka and Razor. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. As I'm scrolling that, through that was like as I'm as I'm scrolling through I see Toka right here. Yeah. Right there. And to take a bit of a side trip was the fact that I like the first movie. First movie was good. Second movie kind of meh. Oh come on. Third movie Ninja Rap. Kind of meh. Come but on. well, <laughs> that wasn't as bad as them because yeah, they yeah, just rap. they they were babies and uh, uh like they they were so dumb and so I I hated them. I hated them. I hated them. I hated them. But yeah, I mean the second movie it, it wasn't great, wasn't bad. The third one uh, was weird. I think what yeah, what screwed me up was the fact that they had a different April O'Neil. And it's not that she did, uh, you know, any different of a job. It's just the fact that a familiar face would have been more kind to my stupid childhood brain, even though I didn't see it when I was a kid. We're just going to skip over that because we're going to talk about, ah. you know, movies later. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it, there was so much to collect. And then, because I was into going to flea markets... One day, I saw this guy had on his table a whole bunch of old antique skeleton keys. And for some reason, it captured my imagination. And I was like, you know what? I like those. And of course, they were extremely cheap or else I couldn't have afforded them. So I, when I got home, I was looking for a key ring. And my parents gave me a key ring. And I had my own collection of antique skeleton keys. Where they went, I have no freaking clue. Well, that's just all, one of those. All things I'm getting from that, that is you had some keys that looked like skeletons. Yeah, sort of, kind of. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. These are or, actually what they what they were, kind of. Or they unlocked skeletons. Oh, see. From, now we're getting yeah, kind of Halloweeny. Mm-hmm. Halloweeny. <laughs> we're gonna have to bleep that. Nope, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. All right, all right. But not also, a bad um, word. I was like, it uh, Halloweeny no. is like Halloween esque or Halloween like. Yeah, true. Weird. But I think a lot of kids had like the Hot Wheels, the Matchbox cars, which I had a lot of. And another thing is to kind of go back to the Fisher Price Little People. We had the garage for the Fisher Price Little People, but I used that for my Hot Wheels. Um, and Matchbox cars. My sister likes to look on Facebook, and there's a group here in town where someone's giving away stuff. 
they just put boxes out on their on their porch or at the street, and they posted on Facebook saying, "Come and get it." Um, several months ago, I picked up some of the original Fisher Price garage stuff, and I gave them to my friend for her kid because both of her kids actually, she's got a four year old girl and eight or nine year old boy now. I think his birthday was a couple of days ago. Um, they both love cars. So I got it for them, and she's like, I said, they might even be worth some money. And then she's like, well, um, you know, my kids are probably going to destroy them. I'm like, I don't care. If they're yeah. worth money and, and you decide to sell them, then, you know, you're good. If not, then at least the kids will get some enjoyment out of it, and then you're good to go. But exactly. she was trying to downsize, and instead she gave them to a woman's shelter. So, yeah. Huh. At least That's they went too. somewhere good. But, yeah, yeah. I, I had those, too, for like 10 minutes until I gave them to my friend. <laughs> yeah, I also collected like the micro machines, which was really just kind of, you know, goes with Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. They were just teeny tiny. Dude, is Matchbox um, even a still making cars? That is a good question. I imagine Wait. they are. It's probably like the cars they sell at the dollar store these days. Maybe. Um, I want to say close to about, uh, probably. Huh. 15 years ago, They're owned by I watched a couple movies, and in the movies they had a Citroen DS, and I was like, ooh, I want to find a, you know, a model of that. Went to a local Meyer, and for people who don't know what Meyer is, Google it. Um, and they had a, it was actually by Matchbox. So, I know at least back then Matchbox still made cars. They still do, looks like. They're, they're actually owned by Mattel. Oh, man. Really? Yeah. It's on Mattel.com. Car activated gate. Oh, dude. Imagine if they had that when we were kids, man. Yeah. Back in my day, I had to lift and lower the gate my darn self. Or you had a lever to do so. <laughs> but keeping with the, the automobile theme... um, I did a lot of model car kits, so I'm not sure whether that was like a hobby or a collection or possibly both. A hobby election? I don't know. Yeah, a hobby election. Oh, but, kind of thing uh, with... yeah, a whole bunch of. Um, sorry, I was looking at stuff and it's cut. I, okay. I got sidetracked. Okay, but yeah, uh, a lot of those. Um, most of them weren't built very well. Uh, but, you know, I did my best. And then there's a couple here that kind of go together. My dad worked for a used car dealership, and my dad did automobile body mm -hmm. work. And the guy who had the used dealership would be like, here's this car, here's what I need done, take it home. So dad and I would load up in this car, and we would come home. So... We knew that this was a car being sold, and I would help clean out the car, and I would collect cassette tapes. So if people had, like, lost their cassette tape in the back of the seat or under the seat or whatever, I would pick it up, and I would collect it, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's As fine, you fine collection. But the, uh, the guy who was selling the cars dealership he actually had like the die cast the 118 scale die cast cars yeah and i started collecting those because he had those and uh uh i remember he he had a whole bunch of them and he brought me into his office and we had to negotiate <laughs> so i'm a little kid going through like a real negotiation about buying a scale model car and making a monthly payment, which I think it was a weekly payment or whatever. I mean, I'll be honest with you. How much I have to put down? That's kind of cool, though. It, not for my brain. I was frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, dude, just freaking sell it to me. Well, I mean, as a kid, if you would be frustrated. But as an adult, it's like you learn something. Yeah. That adults You are learn assholes. how to haggle. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I had a whole bunch of troll dolls. I think a lot of people had troll dolls. Um, uh, I collected trolls. comic books for one whole summer. 
I had a really weird troll doll that I've never been able to find a photo of. It was like a weird darker brown color and it was like uh it was very wrinkly. It had black hair, but it had like it was it was standing like that one with its arms out and its feet down, but it had like an elephant trunk. Oh, interesting. And if you if you look for elephant they actually look like elephants instead of troll dogs. So I don't know. I found some black hair. Maybe ones. I just. Yeah, maybe I just had a dream, but I swear I had one, and the it was heck? the ugliest. Elephant trolls. Yeah. And that's why I said those look like actual elephants, as were yeah. the one that I had. It was standing normally. It's just plain weird. I didn't realize there were animal ones. Yeah. I had a friend named Chuck. Chuck <laughs> Schmidt. If you're out there, buddy, haven't talked to you in 40 years. Because <laughs> um, you're old. Turning 41 in a couple of days. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, and Chuck came down to my house, and we started playing with our troll dolls. And he's, like, going on these magical adventures in the woods around my house. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And like these two, oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to find that one, but God, man. That is something that they have removed from somebody. That is not a troll doll. It's the original but, uh, Norwegian uh, design. Oh, oh, well, okay. I'm glad they went away but, from that uh, design. Chuck had found two twigs that were laying on the ground in a in an X pattern, and he just immediately goes, X marks the spot. We have to start digging. And like I'm like, what are you talking about? So I'm trying to follow him through, you know, his adventure and his mind. But I'm just like, we're not digging this earth with our bare hands. You know, I don't know what to do. But yeah, that was... The- that was the fun times with troll dolls. Ah, uh, I found it. This is one of the play sets I gave to my friend. Apparently it's from yeah. 1973. Ooh. It was about in that condition, too. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think the one I had was a little bit newer than that, but it, I think it was the same design. Oh, this yeah, there's several different but designs. But those were so were cool there. as kids. Yeah. Or different iterations. There were those some were, that were so cool as kids. But I tried collecting comic books for one whole summer. My friend's brother was into collecting comic books, and I was like, okay, cool. But yeah, and you don't read. I, well, that's what I was going to say. I remember Toys R Us had them in packs, and I could buy them. So I just started buying them without really knowing what they were or caring what they were, just to have a collection of comic books. And then eventually I realized, this requires reading. And I don't like reading, so yeah. <laughs> well, that kind of and kinda, I ended up selling them to my friend's brother. I mean, that kind of reminds me. I used to, I used to actually have a pretty large collection of books. I had like fifty, sixty novels that I had read them all, and I mean, I guess that kind of fits it with a collection. But I slowly yeah. just started giving the books away because it's like you know what? I read them, I enjoyed them. I'm gonna give them to someone else to read. So I was giving them away and everything. Three year old, three year old Scott is reading the no romance novels with Fabio on the front. Uh, no, because <laughs> sadly enough, uh, I actually no learned care. how to read later in life than most people do. But actually, the funny thing is, the first books I was reading and understanding were high school and college science textbooks that I used to find at yard sales, and I was reading those before I was ten years old. But anyway, um, no, it was it was uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy novels. I was going to say fantasy oh, okay. novels because you were going to be like, hey, see, romance. Shut up. No. Um, <laughs> see, Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like one of the previous episodes, I was talking about Dungeons and Dragons, and that was um, a large portion of the books that I had because they were, re- they were uh, Dragonlance novels, which were actually... Um, 
originally it started as an add-on to Dungeons and Dragons. It was a different campaign setting or a different world you could play in. And then eventually they started making novels set in that world, and I enjoyed it, so I was reading it. So I collected them. But then I also had a lot of Star Trek novels at one point. Yes, I'm a nerd. You can't tell by looking at me. Well, see, you had far more collections than you originally thought. Apparently. As this progresses, you're, you're remembering that you had all these different collections. Yeah, now I'm crying because of it. No, I'm kidding. So Uh-oh. I had an eye flash um, in my eye. <laughs> Damn it, it's still there. One collection that I was, like, really, really, really into was sports cards. Now, mm. I wasn't huge into watching baseball. I wasn't huge into watching football. I watched basketball because I grew up in Indiana. And if you don't watch basketball, I think they execute you. <laughs> so at a certain point, you have to watch basketball to some degree. And, um, like, I think it was always just trying to get, like, a Michael Jordan card. Just a, a familiar a familiar name. That's the collection I actually I, had. You had a Michael Jordan no. collection? No. <laughs> uh, baseball cards. At one point, I had oh, yeah. four different Nolan Ryan rookie cards. I would have to go through my collection, which I, I still I have. Now. And see what Nolan Ryan cards that I have. Here's the thing. That we was had on, by the a way. tiny. Yeah, I know. Uh, we had a tiny um, Amoco gas station. And when I say tiny, I mean it was almost the size of those gas stations where it's like one person inside, you don't go inside. But oh. this had like a few shelves. And I remember going in constantly with 50 cents and buying a pack of sports cards and I would rip them open and stuff yes me and 50 are tight anyway if 50 cent if 50 cent ever gets a hold of this he'd be like who is that but um yeah who is that pixelated person yeah (laughs) but um, alliteration I Here's a funny story, as I, <laughs> I love to tell We went to my uncle's house once, and someone was having cereal. And it was post-cereal, because I still have the cards. And I looked at the box of cereal from across the room, and I'm like, whispering to my dad, because I don't want to talk to my uncle. Not that I didn't want to talk to my uncle. It's just I was scared of asking the question directly. So I'm like, yeah. Could you ask them to save those cards for me? And Dad goes, "Hey, uh, are you getting those cards? Are you keeping those cards?" And they're like, "No." It's like Sam wants you to collect those for him if you if you get more. And eventually, I got a, a stack of cards. So I have sports cards from Wonder Bread. I have sports cards from Post Cereal. I remember. Those. I have sports cards from Jimmy Dean Sausage. Like all these just special novelty cards to sell, you know, a food product. Speaking because of, sports cards were so freaking huge back then. Well, speaking of food uh not food, food products with with collectibles in it. Remember Hot Wheels cereal? I had a whole bunch of those cars. I don't remember the cereal. Really? Cuz they yeah. always came with a car inside. Really? Well, that sounds like a missed opportunity to young Sam. See now, now I gotta, I just have to double check because now I'm wondering if I'm if I was re- remembering it right. Well, let me finish off the, my sports card story, and then we'll get kind of into that because I do have a part that that kind of gets into that. But well, I was gonna, we're going back cards, to Value City. To tell you. Okay, going back to Value City, they had sealed boxes like you would see in a gas station. And they were baseball, Don Russ, if that's how that's pronounced, uh, uh, card packs. And I was like, ooh. And I, I remember they were fairly inexpensive comparatively to what the sports cards packs were at gas stations. So I bought two boxes, brought them home, and I opened every single one of them. And I still, to this day, have a huge collection of sports cards. 
And the one thing that pissed me off is the fact that everybody I talked to, everybody I talked to was like, hey, keep those. They're going to be valuable someday. We are March 22nd, 2024, and I'm telling you, the cards, as many as I have, aren't worth the cardboard they're printed on. And before you start telling me, they're not printed on cardboard, they're printed on cardstock, I don't care. They're still worthless. Yeah, travel back in time 20 years, and then you probably could have gotten 20 bucks for your box. <laughs> probably. Starting about the year 2000 is when those stopped stopped being collected or anything. Something to that effect, yeah. And apparently I did remember right. Yeah, I don't remember that. And it was like a new car every month, I believe, if I remember right. Oh, that that is a missed opportunity for young. Yeah, but you know what the sad thing is? The cereal tasted like What's ass. That? Oh, I imagine it did. It wasn't there to sell the uh, the Nutrition. nutritional value. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be great. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's another really quick story. Uh, it mixes flea markets and sports cards. One day, I was with my dad, and we were at a flea market, and this guy had uh, a misleading box set up that were displaying different unopened packages of basketball cards. And he had a little tag, and I wasn't sure whether it was the tag above it or the tag below it that had the price of the package in the little slot of the box. So he said, like, specifically, hey... These here, these have a whatever percentage chance of having a Michael Jordan rookie. And I'm like, okay, I'll take five of them. Because I thought little price tag was like 25 cents. And he's like, okay, that's $30. And my dad, his ears perked up and he's like, $30 for basketball cards? And the guy's like, yeah, because it might have a Michael Jordan rookie in it. And he's oh, like, man. You can't sell those for that based on it might have a Michael Jordan rookie <laughs> card on. And the dude's face turned bright red and we just walked off. But little wow. me, I still wanted those cards, but I didn't get them. Well, I'm the kind of person that every year I try to do free comic book day where I go to a comic shop and get some free comics. There was one place in Tucson where I used to go because we used to hit like five different comic shops because sometimes uh, some of the comic shops in, in in addition to giving away their regular comics, they would give away some of their back stock that they had that were overstock of comics. But there was one that we went to that was very little comics, but what, what it was is two sides of the store. You had one side, which was uh, baseball cards and sports memorabilia. The other side had comics, like on one shelf, and then like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, all that stuff, and some, you know, action figures and stuff. And I remember my friend was going to go look at some, uh, maybe selling some baseball cards in there, and their card section, they had like maybe 15 different cards that they were selling. And they that only wanted it. to take one of his cards for $3. But then you go to the other side where they had Magic the Gathering and they had hundreds of cards. And, you know, if he had Magic the Gathering cards that he wanted to sell, he, he, there would be a very big selection, or selection, very big chance that he'd be able to sell his, his cards. So that's kind of going off the, uh, you know, baseball card or sports card collecting. You, my friend, just unlocked a memory that uh -oh. if I had a therapist, they well, would be like... Well, I have one like, more thing to say about yes, cards, but we'll get your story pressed. first. Okay. No, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. My, my story is juicy. My I'll, story let, you, is I'll juicy. let it percolate you, you your brain first. a little bit then. But no, yeah. another thing that yeah. I actually did have were... Um, I don't remember if it was Spider-Man cards or if it was just Marvel cards. Uh... Because I remember I was getting them at, um, I think it was like a dollar a pack. And even though I was broke, you know, a dollar wasn't hard to come come by. 
And I think that um, this was what, mid 90s maybe? And I had a binder that probably had about um, spaces for about 600, and I think I had it more than half full. So I guess that was another collection I had of cards. I don't even know what happened to it. I don't think I gave it away or sold it. It just disappeared one day from my a memory. Lot of stuff so, happened that way. so either I moved and didn't take yeah, it or I don't know. <laughs> maybe something traumatic happened and I just blocked it out. I have no clue. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll jog a memory for you by telling my story. All right. What's okay. your juicy? So again, like you said, you and I grew up we're broke. We didn't have a washer or dryer for laundry. So we had to go to what is called a laundromat. For a lot of people growing up nowadays, they probably don't know what that is. But it is just a gigantic room where you rent a washer and a dryer. So the washer and dryer laundromat had this bricks. Your description. And on one side, this little teeny tiny. It, it's very descriptive. But this teeny tiny little like alleyway and it was just a hole in the wall and it said baseball cards. So I go in there and there's three adult males and I'm like, okay, this is a bit intimidating for young little me, but all right. So I go in there and the TV's on and the TV is blasting something and the guy behind the counter is talking to another guy standing in front of the counter and the dude looks over at me and he's like, you know what? I need some karma. Hey, kid, pick out three packs of any cards you want. They're on me. And I'm like, really? He's Wait, like, you have to yeah. Pockets? So I pick out. Say what? That was a dumb joke. He said they're on him. And I said, what? You have to search his pockets? Yeah, well. That, anyway. that would be a totally different memory. And I would have <laughs> repressed that for a completely different reason. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, I, I pick out the three packs of cards and I grab them and he's like, open them. So I open them there in the store and, they, you know, it's just sports cards. There's nothing. Again, there's no Michael Jordan rookie or anything. There's, you know, and I'm like, OK, so the, the guy's like, you're welcome. I'm like, thanks. So I leave. So I go back to the laundromat. My mom's in there. And I'm sitting there looking through all my cards and I could see her eyes growing substantially in size as she sees me rifling through them. and you know how mothers are when they're angry they somehow speak without opening their mouth so through her gritted teeth she goes where did you get those i said next door a guy bought them for me and she's like yoink she yanks me up by my arm pulls me over into the little hole in the wall slams them down on the counter and goes, I don't know who you think you are, but you buying my son these baseball cards and blah, 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 blah. And the guy's like, hold on. Whoa, I was, you know, I made a bet on this sports game. I just figured if I could do something nice for the kid. And mom's like, you don't do that for my son. And we left. And I didn't get the card. <laughs> I had to leave the cards behind. That's funny. Should have stuck back yeah, in later. Like, it, hey, it, was, it was very traumatic. Yeah. I should have and just kept them in my pocket instead of rifling through them. But yeah, that was very embarrassing. And I imagine that guy is probably, if he's still alive, he still thinks about that every single day. That would be plain weird. But, but now we're going kind of back to the Hot Wheels cereal. Where... One of my, fa no, 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 not one of my, my absolute favorite NASCAR driver, which again, growing up in Indiana, if you didn't watch NASCAR, I think they ran you over with a Bigfoot truck. I don't know. Didn't want to chance it, so I got into NASCAR, and I watched Terry Labonte, number five, the five Kellogg's, Hendrick Racing, right? Okay. So with Kellogg's, there were so many promotions. Where of the course. cereal had a little Terry Labonte car. And that was where I got a lot of stuff. Now, I do have a collection of four 
Yep, that's the good old number five. But what's funny is I just searched uh, NASCAR cereal box, and that was one of the first pictures that came up. Yeah, yeah. I actually I have a cereal box in my collection. The thing is, I still to this day have all of my Terry Labonte collection, which is all kinds of Terry Labonte cars, uh, like all sealed in the packages, still in the packages. And then there was a Terry Labonte cereal. And it was some sort of Kellogg's cross-promotion thing there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, right above the 31 car. Where? Um, right it's, it's the box with the helmet on it. Yep. Speedway. Cr- really? I have that no box. Way. Oh, they're going to ask you to sign in. I'm not signed yep. in right now. There I have go. that box. There you go. The thing is, it was, I was putting it up on my shelf with all my other collectibles, and I accidentally landed on it when I kind of tripped on my bed. So it's crushed, but I still have that box. Please Although tell me all the cereal's the cere- gone. Because okay. All right. It was scary. I was going to say, please tell me the cereal's gone. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. The right. cereal was terrible. But yeah, there were a lot of cross promotional things. Well, it says right there, whole grain oat cereal. I think that's all you need to know. If it's healthy, it's terrible. Hey, hey. But, uh... Um, some, some... Yeah. Let's let's uh, try talking again. Um, <laughs> um, some cereal that's healthy is actually pretty good, though. We discussed that previously. Yeah. Very yeah, little. Grape nuts. Yeah. Grape nuts? I mean, grape nuts? But, uh... Yeah. Great. Yeah, I decided uh, to go weird there for a second. Moving on. All the Terry Labonte stuff, uh, you know, I had to get the UPCs and send them in with shipping and handling and all that stuff. I have yeah, a lot of that of stuff that I got from Serial. And um, one of my proudest collections was, okay, they had Raisin Bran. They had, um, oh my God, what else was it? Uh, the Rice Krispies, and then they had like two more cereals, and they were Hot Hot Wheels cars that were branded like that uh, for each cereal. So you got the set of four. I sent away for it, and when I got it, one of them was broken. That's... The other three were in mint condition, and that, that kind of ruined the whole collection. For... What I think is hilarious is back then, I remember... Um... Being it being fairly illogical, it's like send in you know five UPCs and blah 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 and you know but and then you look in the in the fine print and it's like no purchase necessary. I'm like, do I steal the stuff? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you you do have to purchase because the UPCs come on the back of a product. Yeah, but I think logically you could have purchased the the item directly from them. Probably. You're like, but, hey, how much you want for that? Because usually with Plus those kinds of giveaways like that, legally, they have to, uh, you know, let you join. At least with with like the sweepstakes that they do, you have to be able to do it, you know, without uh, buying the product. Yeah, to be fair. But yeah, you can usually send in a letter, but say, hey, I want to do this and that and whatever. But I don't know if they if that was legal or illegal to you know, do those kinds of things without no purchase necessary. But I remember seeing that and thinking, this is not yeah. very logical. All right. The final thing I've got on my list here, Beanie Babies. I actually had that picture already pulled up for you. Yep. Ready to go. I had a huge collection of Beanie Babies. However, it was inherited from my mom because she was just kind of done collecting. Yeah, I keep it zoomed in. And I figured, yeah, I figured I'm like, hey, I'll I'll do something with them. So I had this huge collection of Beanie Babies, including, look this one up, the Princess Diana Bear. What? Yes. Anybody who was part of that generation Purple thing? knew how absolutely, yep absolutely insane those things were to find. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, what? Um, 
Does that say it's just five thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars? They were extremely expensive back then. Yeah, I wonder if. And, I mean, do you still have one? That's, I imagine. Well, here's where things went. Fuck. We're not that. My first that's girlfriend. Okay, you cut out anyway. <laughs> she, okay, good. My first girlfriend was stealing my video games. Honestly, I had just bought Pokemon Red, and I wasn't spending enough time with her because I was playing Pokemon. She came over and asked to borrow Pokemon Red. So she took complete inbox Pokemon Red and just disappeared with it. I never saw that ever. So to stop her from stealing stuff, I thought she just wanted something that belonged to me. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm like, here, here are Beanie Babies. Take these, all of them, because you'll have one or two or whatever, and they will remind you of me. And I gave her every single one. Yeah. We had the Princess Diana bear. We had the tie-dye bear that you can kind of see towards like the, the bottom right there. Uh, there was like a red bull that wasn't like, you know, associated this with the drink. This looks like the Diana uh, bear right there here. Was in the upper right. Yeah, it kind might of towards be. the upper left. Yeah. That almost looks like the same sort freaking bear. Of. Maybe that person was lucky enough to have like five of them. I don't know. Yeah. But I figured if I gave her stuff from my personal collection, she would think of it as this is, you know, a part of him and stop stealing my video game. Nope. But what ended up happening was we broke up, and as you can see, a lot of those are worth a lot of money, and I don't have them, nor does she. This picture is photoshopped. Look at the is tie-dyed it? bear, and look at the tie-dyed bear up at the top. It's the exact same bear, just flipped. Uh, let's see here. Look at the features on it. Oh, yeah. Right. I can tell by the little uh, elephant that looks like it's got a Canadian maple leaf on it. Yeah. I don't, oh. That is weird. Oh, well, Why exactly would people do that? Photoshopping. <laughs> Terrible. I didn't notice the... But yeah, I, I, I noticed her, the tie-dye one, but I didn't notice the, the elephant. But the elephant's exactly the same bear. It, it is, yeah, yeah. I asked her many years later because I was wanting my Pokemon Red back. I'm like, do you have any of that stuff? And she's like, no, I lost it. I put it in storage because I was moving and I didn't pay and lost it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't care about the Beanie Babies. You know, it was a part of my childhood. I want my video collecting. games. Um, but that, exactly. That Pokemon Red was a huge part of my childhood because I had a lot of fun with that. Far more fun than I ever had with her. Uh, and I'm <laughs> putting that on record. Wow. But uh, ironically, the thing is, she hated me playing video games because it took time away from her. But she bought me SimCity 3000 for Christmas. That that's shows how long ago that was. That's you know- just putting... Fire, that's putting fuel on the fire was what you know, I was going to say. I never played SimCity 3K. Never. Really? Love 2000. And I wanted to... Actually, I have I a copy of SimCity like um, in one of my, my things, but I can't play it because the key was already redeemed and there's no way you can get any new keys anymore. Yeah. So the only way I could do it is is get it cracked, which I might do eventually, but whatever. Yeah, just just say that right out right out in the open. That's that's fine. If there's no way to buy something that you legally have a copy of, I think it's fair game. Just like um I'll be on the record as saying something. Uh recently Sony actually took games that people had legally purchased through their marketplace, removed them from their PlayStations and removed them from the store so they cannot play the games again. So the way I see it... Yeah, that is shit. The way I see it, if you want to play something and it's not available, 
Piracy is the only way to get it. I would well, in rather... that case, I bought myself... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I bought myself GTA 4 many years ago, and, and uh, it, it was used, and it didn't come with a key. So find me a key for GTA 4. I've got the discs. Well, the fun part is, is there were all kinds of abandonware websites where people could download games that the manufacturers no longer supported or even sold. And then uh, CD Projekt Red came out and be like, hmm, there's a market here. So that's where good old games came from. So if I could buy a key that way, I'd be happy because then I'd have a key and I'd have a full the full game. Of course, I'd yeah. have to, I'd have to uh, dust off my CD drive on my computer to play it, but that's not a big problem because, you know, yeah. That's why I keep an old computer around with a CD drive in it. Just um, I bought a computer uh, to use as a web server, a private web server as well as a media server, and it came with a CD USB CD drive. And I, I was bored the other day and I was testing it and we're getting off on a tangent, but that's what we do. Um, it works that's on my Chromebook do, yeah. to read CDs. And I'm probably going to try to see if it'll work in my in one of my Raspberry Pis. Just because. Just because if it works in a Raspberry Pi, yeah. then I can actually emulate systems on the Pi but play the actual disk. So, yeah, anyway, kind of a weird yep. way to do it. But I think we've talked about our collections. Were there any other collections? That's what I was going to say. I believe I'm completely out of collections that I can think of. <laughs> I'm out of collections that I can recollect. <laughs> Only I laughed at myself. No. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. Hey, man. George Lin Winslow, not George Winslow, Michael Winslow, as a kid, was one of my heroes. Yeah. Just for those people watching, he was the, the guy on Police Academy with all the sounds. So I'm going to go over some things that I liked as a kid, but I wanted to collect, but I never did. So you remember Playmobil? things okay good you didn't show the one that we found earlier with all the open heads this one has some but they're facing away from the camera so it doesn't yeah. look as horrifying they're exactly yeah <laughs> they're far more safe for work well i mean the other one's safe for work it's just kind of creepy if you just kind of look at it, like what the heck's going on there but no it's just oh i imagine people with trypophobia would freak out if they saw that original photo oh yeah Maybe I should pull it up. No, I'm just kidding. No. no. But no, we were at a big rummage sale that was set up through some giant um, church or youth group or something like that um, in Tucson. And I picked up this. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I wanted to get a lot of the, um, a lot more of the, the people. Because so I think it was, it had the, the UFO. It didn't have the lid. It had like, two figures but neither none of them were the ones that should have gone into the ufo um this one looks like it's multiple sets together because there's horses and what looks like pvc pipes and stuff but um i just thought the ufo was actually the coolest thing ever because look at it it looks pretty cool yeah that it came out like cool. early 80s but uh if you watch the game chasers which is a show on on here on youtube and what their recent episode as of the recording of this, um, they went to an estate sale and one of the people found it and he's been looking for it for years, but he didn't know who made it or whatever. All he would have had to say it was a, a UFO toy from the early 80s and posted on social media. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be like, oh, that's what it is. Anyway, so um, that's kind of what I wanted to collect, but. There's another thing I did want to collect, but I, it was impractical to do. I, I, as a kid, I wanted every single, um, 
uh, Spider-Man toy there was. Because I, I was and am still a very big Spider-Man fan. And a big Ninja Turtle fan, but those I knew when they first coming or started coming out that that would be impractical to collect everything. But, yeah, those are what I wanted to collect. How about you? That is the sad reality of the fact that it's impractical to collect everything. I think, uh, what, oh my god, what episode was it where I was talking about, uh, you know, in, like, 2001, I was split between three hobbies, you know, uh, video games, guitars, and, and model cars. That was kind of, you know, it, I, I had to learn that you you figure out what you can collect, what you really enjoy collecting, and what you really, 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 really enjoy collecting. And you stick with the one that you really, 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 really enjoy. Because it is impractical to collect every single thing. Are you talking about the episode that most recently came out at the time of the recording of this? The game collecting episode, which is episode I, five? I. It may have been. Because I believe I was talking about... Um, they were th- like almost throwing PlayStation games away. So that was kind of, I think the context um, is the fact that yeah, I was talking about trying to collect video games, uh, but I was split between three hobbies, something to that effect. So it might have been, yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. But um, I, I had one mini collection. I had one mini collection. And let me Google this gentleman's name just to make sure that I have it. Okay. Googly boogly. Baseball. I am going down as saying, and I will fight you to the death, mother eppers. Wow. Jim effing Abbott. Are you familiar with Jim Abbott? Back when I used to care about baseball, probably. Nowadays, no. Dude, I barely remember players like Daryl Strawberry and Bo Jackson. Oh, man. Let, let's not get on that tangent because we could go all night about those <laughs> because I think I've like Kirby Puckett and yeah, Daryl Strawberry and uh, Jose Canseco. Yeah, we could we could go all that. But Jim Abbott was an absolute top notch pick. One hand. He had one hand. He had the glove. On his, uh, I I apologize to anybody who has a, a missing limb. If I am saying this incorrectly, I apologize. His but if you amputated. see in that photo, he has, yes, his he has his patching mitt on his nub. Uh, again, that's not a technical term, and I apologize if I offend anybody. I think they and call what it he a stump. would do is, okay, uh, a stump. I could be then. wrong. He would. I might apologize the, if I'm wrong. And then. Yeah, we're both apologizing. We're not doctors or amputees yet. So, you know. Whoa. And he would slide it on his hand immediately after letting the ball go. And I was so inspired by the fact that this man was such a good pitcher and he only had one hand that I have still to this day a bunch of his baseball cards. And then, like you and I were talking about earlier before, um, those uh, starting lineups. Mm -hmm. They had a Jim Abbott starting lineup, and I do not have the figure, but it came with a little pen. So I have the pen, but I don't have the figure anymore, sadly. But I've got all the bait. You got all the bait? Baseball card. I know. (laughs) (laughs) You just stopped halfway through a word. All the bait. Baseball card. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, I, I mocked you, and then you got quiet all of a sudden. I was going to start making it's cricket sounds. It's technical difficulty. So I'll, I'll explain afterwards the, why it's technical difficulty. Well, is the drummer from Def Leppard also inspirational to you? Uh, actually, you know what? If we're getting off on a tangent, uh, shortly after I moved to Michigan, right, uh, where I was buying up all the PlayStation 1 games, they had what was it called hysteria i think it was the story of def leopard showed up on like vh1 yeah 
And yeah, the thing was, watch, of course, you're watching an actor portray, but watching him go through and lose his arm, I think they sewed it back on, but it, it got infected or it was no longer compatible with him. And it, it, they had to remove it again. And watching him come up with his own uh, system of, you know, the, the pedals on the floor to do what his other arm used to do. Yeah, I mean, that's fairly inspiring. However, I don't have any baseball cards of him. <laughs> Probably uh, just the CDs. Nor did I buy... A, yeah. Um, actually, I, I only have, like, one Def Leppard... Just, just the Def Leppard, not the actual CDs or, or the band or anything. Just, just the cat. Yeah, I have to snap at it, and then I have to remember. Oh, hey, it's Def. It's a Def Leppard. So yeah. Well, I, I, I went, but I don't pretty far for the joke, cat. and then you took it even further. Well, that's what I do. I take the football and I run with it, and then I. And, and, and out of breath, two seconds later, yeah, and I get tackled, and then the ball rolls around, and they go in for a touch. Terrible. So, I think we're all collected out. I believe so. Well, what are your favorite collections that you've had as a kid? Tell us in the comments down there or uh, drop us a message on our uh, socials, which are also down there in the, in the video description. Um, you know, you going to say something? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if they want to follow, that's fine. If they don't, uh, they better. Yeah, you should subscribe. Yeah. And hit the bell notification. Now yeah. That's, you have. Because according to our analytics, only... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. That annoys me according when people to do our that YouTube on videos. Eight billion people that aren't subscribed are watching our, our things. So why aren't you subscribed? Subscribe. Darn it. I will, subscribe. I will actually say last I checked, which I really don't care about that kind of metric, is only 25% of the people who watch are subscribed. So we need some know. Sarah McLaughlin music that like, you know, if we can get oh, that you, through you wanna, copyright, you want to, um, make extort people. people? What well, we're going to no, have some no, Sarah no, no, McLaughlin no, no. music just and then some dying video games and stuff them. just to kind of, you know, only with only five subscriptions, you too can support this video game for another month. With only five subscriptions, you can help support this dying video game. I'm glad those those Don't commercials you want aren't this on video TV game anymore. To live? Yeah, because that made me change the channel every time it came on because I wanted to help, but I couldn't. In so. the arms of Super Mario, get a power up and fly away from here. Well, I people, think we've emotionally abused everybody. Enough. Emotional damage. I can't. I'm not going to try to do the accent because we'd be canceled. But the sentiment yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah, something to that effect. Well, people, we shall see you next week. Until then, keep collecting weird stuff, I guess. Yeah. See you. Hey, everyone. It's Fifi. That's like totally it for today's Vintage View podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you had a blast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more retro gaming vibes. You guys rock. Seriously. Catch you in the next episode. Peace out.